Hello there, Veena here from digitalaccesspans.com. In this video, I'll take you behind the scenes to show you how you can integrate SendGrid with DAP. So if you want to use SendGrid as your email SMTP server and you want to integrate with DAP to send out your emails, there are a few things that you need to configure in SendGrid first. So first, let's take a look at what you need to do in SendGrid. Then we'll take a look at uh, how you can configure DAP to integrate with SendGrid and we'll then test the whole process. All right, so let's get started. So log into your SendGrid account. Under settings, look for mail settings. Click on that, it will bring up a page like this and whitelist the email address from where you will be sending your emails or you can whitelist the entire domain. So in the DAP setup config page, under the from email ID field, whatever email address you have in there, copy that because that's the one you need to whitelist in your SendGrid settings because DAP will be sending out emails from this email address. So copy this and in SendGrid under address whitelist, whitelist that email. So you can whitelist the entire domain or you can whitelist specific email IDs. All right, so after you whitelist the email address or the domain name, then click on event notification. Now this will allow SendGrid to send out notification for events like opens, clicks, bounces, and all that to the configured URL. So this is a very important step because this will allow DAP to track email stats. So here you will have to enter this HTTP post URL. So it needs to be set to your domain name slash DAP slash dap-sendgrid.php. So this part is always going to remain the same. Just replace your site.com with your domain name. So after you enter the HTTP post URL, you will have to let SendGrid know uh, what actions should trigger a notification to DAP. So here, make sure to check delivered, bounced, opened, clicked. So these are the four things that DAP tracks. So make sure that these four uh, actions are uh, checked. And unsubscribe, DAP will track it because you'll be entering the a DAP merge tag for unsubscribes in the broadcast emails that you send from DAP. I'll show you that in a little bit when we create the broadcast email in DAP, but you don't have to check this. So the ones that you need to check are delivered, bounced, opened, click, and the DAP will report these stats in the DAP um, email reports page. So make sure these four are checked and uh, click on this to save it. So the next thing is domain authentication. Domain authentication is a very important step, a step that you should not skip because it has a huge positive impact on your reputation as a sender and on your email uh, deliverability. So don't skip this step. Email service providers distrust messages that don't have domain authentication set up because they cannot be sure that the messages are actually coming from you. By explicitly stating that it is coming from you will increase your reputation with email service providers and it will make it less likely that they will filter your email and not allow it to get to your recipient's inbox. And so it will increase your deliverability. So don't skip this step. Now domain authentication basically shows email providers that SendGrid has your permission to send emails on your behalf. So to give SendGrid permission, you'll have to point DNS entries from your DNS provider to SendGrid. So you may have to work with your web hosting provider to uh, do this step because yesterday I tried to do this myself for one of my domains and the verification was not working. So I had to work with Liquid Web. Uh, Liquid Web is my web host uh, to get it to work. So let me show you the steps. So, so under settings, click on sender authentication. It will bring up a page like this. So what you need to do is click on authenticate your domain. Which domain name server host do you use? So here I use Liquid Web. So it's not listed here. So I'm going to select other host, not listed. Then it says which one? I'll say Liquid Web. Would you also like to brand the links for this domain? This is a very important step because uh, if you don't set this to yes, what will happen is if you have links in your emails, then SendGrid is going to uh, replace those links to point to its own server. Uh, so it will point to SendGrid.net server instead of your own domain. So the reason SendGrid does this is because uh, this allows them to track the clicks. But uh, by doing this step, what will happen is it will rewrite all the tracking links to use uh, the domain that you set up instead of SendGrid.net domain. So it will definitely improve your email deliverability and reduce the chances of it landing in spam. So make sure to set this to yes. Next, domain where you want to send the email from. So enter your domain name and under advanced setting here, um, where it says use a custom link subdomain, check that box. So here I'm going to say lab. So this will be the subdomain. It will be lab.membershipsitelab.com. So now instead of sendgrid.net, this is what uh, the users are going to see when they receive the links in the email. So next, what you need to do is uh, add these records to your web host DNS section. So my web host is Liquid Web. Yesterday when I did this for one of my domains and tried to add this uh, to Liquid Web's DNS section. And then when I completed that, 
I clicked on, I have added these records, verify it, it didn't work. So it kept giving me some error. So I had to work with uh, Liquid Web Support to get it to work because there were some conflicting entries in the DNS section of that domain in Liquid Web Server uh, for this domain. So, so main thing is you need to enter these C name records in your DNS. If you're not sure how to do this, work with your web host and they should be able to help you. And main thing is when you click on verify, it should complete the verification. For example, if I click on verify now, it's not going to work. That's because I have not entered these uh, in Liquid Web's DNS section. So it says enable to look up the C name. So once you complete this, it will take some time for the verification to work. It might not work instantly. Yesterday it took about 15 minutes uh, for it to work in my case for one of my domains, but it could take several hours depending on how soon the DNS uh, stuff propagates. So, so what you can do is make these entries in the DNS section, work with your web host to make sure what you have entered is correct and then do the verification. And if the verification results in error, give it a few hours and see if it still doesn't work then go back to your web host and have them take a look. So next under settings, under tracking, make sure that you have enabled click tracking and open tracking. So these should be set to on. If you don't do this, then SendGrid can track clicks and opens and DAP cannot track it as well. So make sure that these are both enabled. So after you configure SendGrid in DAP email SMTP page, you need to enter your SendGrid credentials. So one good thing about uh, the way the DAP email SMTP stuff works is you can actually have multiple SMTP servers here and DAP will round robin between all of the servers that you have here. So here you can see I have Mailgun and I also have SendGrid. I can have DAP round robin and uh, send out emails through all of these SMTP servers. So here I am going to add my new SMTP connection and I have actually disabled the other three because I just want to test this new connection. So what you can do is under add a new SMTP server, uh, enter your credentials. So under uh, description, you can add anything you want. Under server, it should be smtp.sendgrid.net. Under port, enter 587, uh, that's a port I use. If it doesn't work, then uh, make sure to work with your web host and have them uh, unblock port 587 if it's in the SMTP block list because uh, one time when I was trying to use 587, it was in my SMTP block list, so it was not working, but uh, your web host can unblock it from your SMTP block settings. And uh, so port 587 is what I use. You can set SSL to N, and user ID password is actually your SendGrid login credentials. So, so whatever username and password you use to log into your SendGrid account, that's what you need to enter here. So enter your username and password and email sending limit. It really depends on who your web host is and what type of hosting account you have with them. So here I use Liquid Web uh, VPS. So I can go 500 or even 1000 and test out how it works. This is the email sending limit. If it's a shared web hosting server, uh, you cannot exceed the limit uh, that your server allows you. So make sure to check this with your web host if you're not sure or leave the default setting of 180 emails per hour and uh, if you are on a VPS hosting, you can go higher, but uh, test it to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, you don't see any unexpected results. So I'm going to go with 500, activated, yes, and update. So now whatever emails I send from DAP, it's going to go through SendGrid servers. So after you configure SendGrid and after you enter your SendGrid credentials in the DAP email SMTP page, uh, so DAP knows how to connect to SendGrid as an email SMTP server, uh, the next step is to schedule an email broadcast and test. So that's what we are going to do now. So visit the DAP email broadcast page and schedule a test email. What I have done is I have created a test product in DAP and I have given myself access to that test product. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select option number three here and select the test product that I have here. So, so here's the email that I have and I have a link here. I want to see how this link looks like uh, when it arrives in my inbox. I want to make sure that it doesn't point to SendGrid's um, domain, but it points to my own subdomain. So, so let me schedule this email. So you can see the job has been scheduled. The tracking ID for this job is this. If you visit the DAP system job queue, you will find this job and DAP will start sending out the emails that are a part of this broadcast job at the top of the hour when the cron job runs. So I don't want to wait uh, until the top of the hour uh, for this email to go out. So what I'm going to do now is run the cron manually and uh, see if the email gets sent. So let's go ahead and do that. So here, I don't want to wait until the top of the hour for the cron to run. And because I'm just sending out a test email and just to myself, so I'm going to run the cron manually, but do not do this if you're sending out emails to hundreds of users. If you're just sending a few emails, you know, less than hundred emails, for example, then it's okay to do this. Otherwise the cron will time out if you run it manually and 
and the results could be unpredictable. So here I'm going to run the cron manually by visiting uh, domain name slash dap slash dap dash cron dot php script enter when the job completes it's just going to show you a blank page and that's fine. If it just shows you a blank page, it's fine. If it shows you any errors, it means the job did not complete. So it just shows me a blank page, which is fine. So now I'll see if I received the email. So I have received the email, everything looks good and the links look right. The only thing that I notice here is that when I check these links here, I can see that it's pointing to the sendgrid.net server. So you can see towards the bottom right here that uh, it's pointing to sendgrid.net server. Now the reason it's doing that is because I have enabled click tracking in sendgrid. So sendgrid is doing that so it can track clicks. But my understanding was that if in your SendGrid account under settings, under sender authentication, if you have done the domain authentication, if you have done the link branding, and if you update the DNS with the right entries, then um, those links will still point to your subdomain instead of pointing to SendGrid.net. But that didn't happen. So I have a ticket open with SendGrid support. We are going back and forth on this. Uh, I still don't have an answer from them, so I'm not sure yet if it is possible uh, to replace those links that are currently pointing to SendGrid.net to actually point to my domain. Uh, I'm hoping it's possible, but I don't have a definitive answer from them yet. They have looked at my setting and they are saying it's set up correctly. And I also spoke to Liquid Web Support. Liquid Web is my web host to check if my DNS was uh, set up correctly. And they confirmed uh, that everything looks right and it's as per the SendGrid documentation. So it's still not clear uh, why SendGrid is still uh, pointing those links to SendGrid.net instead of the subdomain that I have set up. And so I'm waiting on an answer from them. And once I know how it works and if it's going to still point to SendGrid.net or if it's going to point to my own domain name, then I'll let you know. So once I have an answer from SendGrid support, I'll update this post with what I find. So stay tuned for that. So I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, comments, you're welcome to join my Facebook group or uh, you can just post a comment here in this post and I'll be happy to answer them for you. My name is Veena Prashant. Thanks for watching.